us the joy to be uh, back here in Newcastle once again this afternoon bring to you the glad tidings, the good news that there is a saviour, there's uh, a way back and from the dark path of sin and hope to be found in the saviour, Jesus. My Lord, whom I testify of before you here once again this afternoon. Somebody maybe perhaps like a copy of God's Word is on the record concerning his Son whom he sent into the world, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Like a copy of God's written Word, the Bibles, New Testaments, this Gospel of John, freely offered to you and uh, you're simply and only for the taking if you'd like one read for yourself and see that the things of which i speak to you today are so according to god's own record you say it's not true you call god a liar and god is not that he speaks only the truth and of course the truth is spoken in order that you might be set free that you might be liberated that is from your worst and known danger and enemy and that of course is uh, that sinful nature which is in every single one of us and the only cure for it is as Jesus says you must be born again given a new nature that is and given everything necessary in order to enter into God's salvation, repentance towards God, faith towards His Son, Jesus Christ, salvation, forgiveness, joy, peace, everlasting life, all to be found in Jesus, and of course only in Jesus. Many, many people who want the joy, want the peace, want the... Uh, want the life but they don't want him but you can't have the benefits without the benefactor you have to receive him in order to receive the benefits he came to his own the bible says his own people that is but they received them not they rejected him but them that did receive him those who did believe on his name uh, he gave the right authority power that is to become well that which we're not by nature children of god by nature we're children of wrath we are conceived in sin says god not my opinion not here to give you my opinion or anybody else's god's god's opinion and god doesn't ask for yours or mine he simply states his own and that is of course that we all of us without exception every man woman and child born into this world, conceived in sin, that's where it begins. And then nine months later, you're born in sin, and live in it, and die in it, and go, of course, to a lost eternity, unless, unless that is, by the grace of God, you're saved. Salvation, that's what the Bible's about, not religion. Religion speaks of what, the Bible speaks about what religion can't do for you. Dead religion, dead popes, dead prophets, no avail to you, not whatsoever. They're just as dead as you are. Now, it's a living saviour that you need, one who has proved himself, one who has conquered, overcome sin, death and hell. Jesus came into the world not to make you healthy and wealthy, he came to save sinners. And that's what we all are, every single one of us, by nature, and by practice of course that ought to be evident to you by now you know you look at your world you look at your society your own community around you i mean who needs proof i ask you of the existence of sin and of course alive and kicking in your heart and mine too but the only remedy well god has in his love and his grace in his kindness just merely out of his good pleasure not for any pressure on God, not because he was compelled to do anything to help any one of us, 
simply out of his good pleasure, God has provided you with a way back to himself. This is the gospel, the very heart of it, for God so loved the world that he gave, simply gave a gift to the world. He gave his only begotten son, gave him up to the death of the cross, that is, take away your sin, take away your guilt, take away your blame, your shame, take the curse of God from off of you, remove the wrath of God from off of you, which lies upon you presently. For as the Bible says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold, hold down, suppress the truth about God, that is, in unrighteousness. See, as God says in his word, you know, some people, they come to me asking me, you know, to prove that God exists. Don't ask me to do that. I won't do that. God doesn't do it either. Yes. What do you want? Just listen. Okay, good. So, you know, uh, God doesn't do that either. You know that God exists. You know that by everything that he has made. you got no excuse. You're a morally accountable creature. You're a conscience within you that tells you when you're right and when you're wrong. But who is it you're going to give account to? Well, God in that day. When you stand before him in judgment, point it out to man who wants to die. Or you can convince yourself that there's no God, but you can't convince yourself that death is closure, because it's not. When you cock your toes up, close your eyes in death, go out of this world, and you stand before God, the God that you've denied, lied about. So don't call yourself an atheist. Call yourself a denier. Call yourself a liar. But don't call yourself an atheist, because that you're not. There's no such a thing on planet Earth. We are all of us without excuse. You know that God is, and you're accountable to him, and one day you'll give account. Jesus says you give account for, even for every idle word. Never mind the foolish ones. Never mind the blasphemous ones. Never mind the ugly ones. Never mind the hurtful ones. Every single idle word, says Jesus, in that day you give account for. So when it comes, and it comes to young people, it comes to children, foolish children as well, it comes to us all, it's appointed unto man who wants to die. After that, then comes the judgment. God has given notice to the world, don't you know, that he intends to judge the world, all mankind, in righteousness, a perfect righteousness, by the one whom he has raised from the dead. So Jesus, you see, he will either be your savior or he will be your judge in that day when you stand before him. One or the other. One or the other. Judge Jesus or savior Jesus. Which will it be? The Lamb of God, he's called, which taketh away the sin of the world. And will take away yours today should you that is in the way of repentance and faith towards him be saved, salvation, eternal life, peace with God, joy over sins forgiven. But there has to be repentance. Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. God now commanded all men everywhere, no matter where you come from, color, background, creed, from Afghanistan to Alaska and everywhere else in between, no matter where you come from, what you are, all of us, God commands all men everywhere to repent. And except you repent, you shall all likewise perish, as Jesus, the Savior himself says and commands you, even commands you today, repent ye and believe the gospel, the good news that Jesus saves sinners. For the kingdom of God is at hand, and the way you enter God's kingdom is only in the way of repentance, faith towards the Son of God, who loved sinners and gave himself for them, came, lived and loved and died, endured that suffering, pain, agony, the shame, the blame due to you upon that cross, and of course died, rose again from the dead, in order that you might be justified, that is, before God, 
found blameless, justified, cleared before God's court, righteous altogether, not through your doing, not because you're religious or irreligious, not because of anything you've done, not because of anything in you, simply and only through faith in Jesus, the Son of God, the only Savior, the one whom the psalmist here today speaks of. He says, truly my soul waiteth upon God, for from him cometh my salvation. Comes from nowhere else. No good look into the state, no, look, no good look into man's religion, you know, Islam, Mecca's, Rome's, the Pope. They're dead, just as dead as you are, all of us. So we come into the world, don't you know, with sinful natures conceived and born in sin. Dead, 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 not, not a little bit dead, not a big bit dead, completely, totally, absolutely, and utterly dead, alienated from the life of God. No life in you, just a, just a sinful and miserable existence on planet Earth for a certain number of time, and then God takes you away to judgment. So, you see, um, look into man for this, from, from, from God, the Lord God, comes, uh, comes my salvation, he says. Religion, dead religion, dead popes, dead Mohammeds. I mean, what can Mohammed do for you? Huh? He's dead and buried, his bones are rotten in the grave, just like all the popes that have gone before the present one just as dead as their religion, no life in them. I mean, what did, what did Muhammad ever do for anybody except killing people, eh? And his followers do the same. No, no, Muhammad never died for anybody's sins. No Pope ever died for anybody's sins. Only Jesus. He's the only Savior, sent by God, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, sent by God, and sent for this very purpose, to endure that suffering, the agony of the cross, to bleed and die, in order to lift the curse that lies upon all of mankind. You don't know, I know, you, you, that's why I'm here to tell you these things, you know. You don't realize it, you know, you, you think, you know, you can organize the world, man thinks he can you know, he can repair, restore the world, put it back together again. The politicians, you know, fools and blind, they think that they can repair, restore, you know, your country, make Britain great again, but they can't. Because the curse of God lies upon the entirety of mankind. And all that you do, you know, to seek to repair yourself, repair your nation, repair the world, God just blows on it and brings it crashing down again. That's why your nation's broken. Eh? That's why Newcastle under Lyme is broken. That's why you've got men and women with broken minds, broken bodies. The curse of God lies upon humankind. Can't you see it? Are you yet blind? But in order for the curse of God because of man's apostasy, departure from God, suppressing of the truth and unrighteousness, because of that, the wrath and the curse of God lies upon you. And it takes the death of someone in order to remove that curse from off of you. The death of the Son of God, that's what he came for. That's why he was hanged on a cross. That's why he suffered the death of the cross. It had to be that way. One that had to be bloodshed because without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness, no remission of sin. But it had to be divine blood because just the blood of a man is of no power, no avail, none whatsoever. It was divine blood that was shed on that cross. That's what makes it powerful, effective. That's why it cleanses from sin. That's why it breaks, cancels the power of sin transforms the hearts of minds and men of women but there had to be the death of the man a god man even jesus christ the son of god what he came for in order to lift the curse there has to be a death 
and that curse lies upon you now and will lie upon you for all eternity unless you're saved, unless you're washed, unless his blood is made effectual to you, in you, lifting the curse of God from off of you, liberating, setting you free from it. That's what Jesus came for. That's the love of God to you in the giving of his Son up to the death of the cross in order that that curse might be lifted from off of you and the wrath of God that lies upon you because of your departure from God. You're a pastor, say that is, because of your, your uh, I carry on, sir, eh? You won't be doing that in the judgment, sir. Now, cast into hell, sir. That's, that's the end of your mockery. That's what you'll get. That's what you'll get, just the same. Carry on. On the pathway to destruction, fools and blind. So like I say, you know, the death of the Saviour, that's what it takes. Nothing less. Sorry. Could I get for your Bible? No, not today. Why? Next, next, come back next Tuesday. I'll bring you one. I'll bring you one. Special this for you. Bible? I know, yeah. I'll bring you one next week. Come back Thank next you. week. Okay. So like I say, friends, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very simple. You know, Jesus died for sinners, loved them and died for them. That's the love of God, you know, not no, like I say, no, no compulsion on God's part, no, no have to, you know, from God's part, just uh, out of his good pleasure, his loving kindness, providing us with a way back, that dark, dark path of sin, you know, that brings ruin, that, that ruins the world, ruins the nation, you know, it, uh, it's only one way, neither is there salvation, in any other, none other name, as says the Bible, under heaven whereby we must be saved. So get it, will you please? It's not religion. It's not religion, it's a savior that you need. It's not a dead prophet, it's not a dead pope that you need. It's a savior, a living savior. One who has proved himself, demonstrated himself to be exactly what he is. He came, born of a virgin, lived and loved that blameless life, lived and loved and died on that cross, went to the grave, arose from the grave in order, in order to conquer sin and death and hell on the part of those who believe, will believe, only through faith, not your good works. Imagine any good works. There, there are none. You have none. There's none good, says God, and there's none that, that doeth good. What, what good have you got? I ask you to, to offer God. All you've got is just a sinful life, just a sinful being and character from one end of your earthly existence to the other. Nothing about sin. Walking, breathing, talking sinners. That's all that we are apart from the grace of God nothing to offer God but your sin. But if you bring your sin, you bring your sin to that cross where Jesus bled and died, you bring your, you bring your sin to him confessing it and of course repenting of it, turning from it, without any thought in your mind of ever returning to it again, turning from it, let the wicked forsake his way thoroughly and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. He will show mercy abundantly pardoned. It's the gospel that there is forgiveness with God, that there's a way back from that dark path of sin, but only one way, one Savior, no other. His name is Jesus. That's what his name means, Jesus, Savior. And he has proved himself to be such over 2,000 years, more, 6,000, since the world began, he saved Adam, been saving sinners all that time, and saving them today, here in Newcastle under life, and elsewhere, the worst of sinners and the best of them, degenerates, drunkards, drug addicts, idolaters, immoral men and women, lost in sin, trapped by it, and stared by it, Unable, unable to cancel and break the power of sin themselves, turn to all kinds of remedy. Alcoholics Anonymous, 
Drugs Anonymous, they turn to the state, or they give you benefits. They facilitate your drug abuse, they'll facilitate your drunkenness, but they won't set you free from it. They don't know how to. They haven't got the power to. Yeah. Look to all kinds of, you look to cycles, you look to religions, you know, and you can become religious. You can do that quite easily. Just go to the mosque, the synagogue, the temple, they'll make you religious, they'll give you some rules to, they'll give you some rules to obey. Cults, that's what they are, you know. Do what we tell you to do, and you know, you'll be good. Yeah, good with them, good with them, and not good with God. Only one way you can be good with God, and that's through faith in His Son. God has made the provision. God has set the terms. His terms, not yours. Faith in my Son, He says, you believe. No flesh shall ever be justified, made right, that is, in my sight, says God, by the works of the flesh, that is, by your own doing. Your doings, your undoing. That's your problem. That's your problem thinking that you can do it yourself, the idol of self. Yeah, I can do this myself, I don't need God, you know? Uh, just, uh, let's all just love one another. We don't need we don't need the gospel for that. Let's all just love one another. Love the sodomites, love the love, love the love the fornicators, love, love them all. Just all love one another. That's all we need, they say. Well why don't you? Why don't you love one another? Huh? Because they can't. Inability. Human inability. But not without human accountability. So, you see, you got to come to that place, you know, of realization, I can't do this myself. I need help. And that takes humility, you know, like the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You know, you come to that place of acknowledging, no, this is something I can't do myself. I've tried and tried, you know, failed and failed. Tried to get off the drink, the drugs, the immorality, all the rest of it. Tried to tidy up my life, you know. Tried, 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 fail and fail and fail. Again and again and again, because you can't do it yourself. So as long as the pride remains, you know, I can do this, I can do this. Man's pride, you know, we can build back the world, we can make it good again. All the king's horses and all the king's men can't put the world back together again. That takes more power than man has got. That's why the God-man, Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, that's why he had to come. That's why he had to live and die and rise again from the dead mighty son of God conquered sin and death and hell overcame them for those that is who will trust who will confide in him put their confidence in him and what he has done not themselves but in trusting him you turn away from self you turn away from the nanny state you turn away from the religion you turn away from the popes and the priests. You turn away from them because they're no good. Because they got no power. They got no salvation. They can't help you any more than you can help yourself. So you see, you come to that place, empty, broken-hearted, nothing to offer, no way back. You see, you, you see yourself in that place, sinful, having offended God broken his law, a sinner by nature and by practice every which way, up one side and down the other, to the left and the right, simple, 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 from your mother's womb in conception until the point where you breathe your last and then stand before the judge of all the earth. But when you come to that place of seeing yourself in that place, well then you're ready to hear about Jesus. The wonderful Savior, the King of glory, crowned in glory, now risen, ascended, exalted, right hand of the Father, crowned in glory, ruling the nations, and all authority in heaven and earth given to him. He's the one. 
He's the one, the only saviour. He's the only one who can bring you back. He's the only, only one who can repair you, restore you, make you good again. He's the only one who can break the power of sin. You might be able to overcome, you know, the odd, the odd bout of drunkenness. You might be able to repair yourself in a measure for a short time, but not long before you're back, you know, like the, like the, the swine, you know, returning to the vomit. You can take the old pig, you know, you can take it out of the muck and mire, and you can wash it, you know, put a jacket on, a shirt and a tie, sit at your table, you know, all nice and clean and shiny, but then, you know, you take your eyes off it for one minute, it's out the door, and it's back in the mire. That's you, you know, your self-reformation, tidying yourself up, you know, all nice and clean and shiny, but then the old nature kicks in again, and you're back in the muck and miles, and just like the swipe returning to the vomit. You go back to it again, it ruins you, it destroys you financially, health-wise, every which way, it destroys your marriages, it destroys your health, your wealth, it destroys you, but you keep going back to it, the mire of sin, you keep going back to it again and again and again. Until God, until God educates you, until the schoolmaster, his law, his commandments, educate you, you know, as to what kind of a lost, hopeless sinner it is that you are. And shows you, opens your eyes to behold Jesus, to see him as your great need. And then when you go to him, you cry out to him, because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, shall be saved. You call on him, seriously, sincerely, in the way of repentance, in the way of faith, trust, that is, confidence that he is able, able to do, able to save you to the uttermost, no matter how bad you are, how good you might think you are, no matter, no matter the worst of you, I tell you, the most degraded, the most disgusting of you, no sinner deeper than the grace of God in Jesus Christ, ever lost you be, there's a way back, his name is Jesus, I am the way, the truth and the life, he says, no man comes to the Father but by me, no other saviour, that's why the psalmist, he says here, truly my soul waiteth upon God from him, cometh my salvation from Jesus. Wait upon him in faith, call upon his name, cry out to him. But do it urgently, will you? Do it urgently, because you don't know what time you have left, you know? Maybe you're still young, maybe you're just a teenager. Matters not. They die as well. Your times are in his hands, not yours. Time of your departure from this world, that's not on you. That, 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 that's not on you. That, that's on God. It's appointed, divinely appointed for you. Once to die, after that comes the judgment. So my prayer, my hope for you, Newcastle sinners, is, well, before you get to that place, that you call out to the Lord Jesus and that he save you because be assured not just from me from God's word from the Bible from him alone cometh salvation he only he goes on to say he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense I mean who else can defend you against the ravages of sin that you're faced with in this degenerate generation in which you find yourself. What a wicked generation is this. Sin, sin, sin. Never, never enough of it. The cup is filling up day by day, treasuring up wrath for the day of God's wrath. I don't think there's been such a wicked generation on a long, long time. Maybe going back to the days of Noah, 
That was a seriously violent generation, wicked, evil generation. God judged them. God flooded the world and destroyed the whole of mankind except for eight souls. And then there was Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, doing exactly the same things that you do in your society today. They were very proud of their pride, you know? The sodomy, the filthy, abominable homosexuality that permeates your society today, an abomination to God. God rained down fire and brimstone upon them for their degenerate, disgusting, abominable behavior. What will they do with this generation? Well, they won't keep silent, that's for sure. He's not silent. I mean, look at the growing insanity amongst you, eh? Now you're saying that men can become women and women become men? Huh? Mental, mental, given over to reprobate minds. And those of you, of course, who, well, would disagree, you know, with what the, the culture vultures are setting before you, you of you who can see the insanity, you're too cowardly, you're too yellow to speak out against it. That's why they get away with it. That's why they lay it on you. Because they, they, they know you're like silly fallen sheep, you know? You just do what they tell you to do. You don't lift your voice. Don't even lift your voice against the murder. Hey, hey they jailed a young woman for life yesterday. Lucy, let me. I say, let Lucy be. Let Lucy be. She's only doing, she's only doing what, she only did what the state does day after day. She murdered six children. Well, the state are doing that in the thousands every day. 14 million children, unborn children, slaughtered in the name of the state, the National Health Service. Uh, Lucy Letby was only doing what the government's doing. So if she, de she deserves life, what does the state deserve? But again, you're all too cowardly. You won't lift your voices for the unborn. You just let the slaughter go on. Huh? So like I say, a degenerate, a wicked, evil, violent generation. Society that you've got is the outworking of your sin. It's the outworking of your rejection of God, your departure from God. So he says, you say to him, you say in response to the gospel, you say, I don't want this. Yeah. So God says, okay, I'll open another door and I'll give you, I'll even give you a push through the door. I'll help you through. Yeah. And I'll give you what you want. I'll give you more of your sin. I'll give you more of your filth. And I'll give you more of that too, mister. Yeah. He'll give you more of that too. That's what you'll get in the day when you stand before him and throw you into unquenchable flames, fires of hell. Damnation awaits you. So like I say, you know, it's uh, God just opens the door, gives you a push through, and he gives you what you want. Yeah? Gives you more sin, more of your filth, more of your uncleanness, more of your blasphemous ways, more of your brokenness. And then he gives you over to reprobate minds, to do those things, insane things, insanity, to do those things that are not fitting even for animals to do. That's you today, that's Newcastle under life, that's Newcastle sinner. That's this nation, that's this world. It's ripe, ripe for judgment. And I tell you, it's coming and coming very soon. And you need to be ready. So I urge you, I, I plead with you, implore you, be, beseech you on behalf of Jesus Christ, be reconciled to God while you may. Because the time is short, the Bible says so. Time is short, your time may be even shorter, who knows? Maybe perhaps you'll not, maybe perhaps you'll not even see tonight, tomorrow. Oh, you think I have plenty of time left? Why did I think about these things? No, no, you haven't. 
and they will come assuredly when you put your socks on in the morning and you expect to take them off at night, but you won't. It'll be the undertaker who takes them off. Yeah, it comes as a shock. It comes as a surprise to most people, especially those who are not ready. So I bid you get ready. Get ready for that judgment day because it's coming down the line. Sure as apples is apples, it's coming. Get ready, huh? Repent and believe the gospel, says Jesus. That's the only way. That's the only way back from the dark path of sin. Repent ye and believe the gospel, except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish in the judgment of God for all eternity. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. There's only one defense, I tell you, against the ravages of sin in this your day and generation. One rock, one shield, one defense, one defender. And his name is Jesus. You need him to fight for you, for your children. Who'll, who'll rescue them, I ask you? Eh? Your children are swallowed up by the culture vultures day after day and fed the same insanity in the education system and elsewhere. What will happen to my children, you say? My grandchildren, things go worse and worse. Who'll fight them, who'll defend them? Well, the same one that would save you, should you, that is, repent and believe and trust in him, he would defend you and defend your children and your grandchildren also. Happen. But that's the only hope. And that's my, that's my defense, you know, for coming to you. Because that's the hope that's in me. You know? The hope of the gospel, that is. Hope in the face of the certainty of death. Hope in the face of, of the, the inevitability of God's judgment. I come to you as no hopers. I mean, call yourself what you will. Call yourself an atheist, godless, unrighteous. And a holy, call yourself what you will. What I call you, no hopers. No hopers. Because what you trust in, whether it's self, religion, the state, or your granny, uh, whatever, whatever it is that you're trusting in, your faith is in, you got no hope. No hope in the face of death. Uh, you can convince yourself that there's no God but you can't convince yourself that death brings closure because you know it doesn't. You know it doesn't. You're a morally accountable creature and you'll give account to God in that day when you stand before him. So hope, you see, a hope, a sure hope, a hope that doesn't disappoint, hope that won't fail to be found in the Savior who came and lived and loved and died conquered sin and death and hell, endured that suffering, that death, the pains of death, in order to remove it from you. That is, should you repent and believe the gospel, should you trust in him? To take away, you endured all that, to, to take away your sin, its guilt, take the curse and the wrath of God from off of you, liberate you, set you free, and give you hope in this world in the face of the certainty of death and inevitability of God's judgment. But without Jesus, you got no hope. So that's what you are. That's who you are. That, that's who I'm coming to. No hopers. I'm coming to you that you might have hope. You might have the hope that I have. That's my defense for preaching the gospel to you. I got no, no great philosophical... Uh, arguments to give to you come with them come with them if you will but i won't answer them you know that god is you know you're accountable you know what you are so like i say friends you know no hope without jesus no hope without the savior no hope without the defender no, one, no hope without the one who came that you might have hope in the face of death and judgment that hope can be yours today, should you, that is, 
listen here, hearken to what God has to say to you. Hear not just my voice, but hear the voice of the Savior calling you apart from your sin. My sheep, he says, they hear my voice and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish in hopelessness. The question is, do you have ears to hear? Hearts to, hearts to believe, wills to obey. The command of the gospel, repent ye and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of hope, of joy, of peace, of salvation. But like I say, it's on you. I set before you the Savior, Jesus, Son of God, came to his own. His own received him not, but to them who did receive him, to those that believed on his name, he gave, he gave them the right to become children of God. So he's offered to you. You take and you take the gift of God. For God so loved the world that he gave, gave, reached out his hand, gave his son to the world, a sin-cursed world, vile, full of vile sinners who have ruined this world, ruined this creation. And he'll judge them for that too. You take and you ruin everything good that God gives you. You twist it, you pervert it. You make it disgusting, abominable, sick, vile sinners under the wrath and judgment of God and one day to be cast into hell's damnation for all eternity. Well, she let me, she just got life. Yesterday, she just got life. That will come to an end and she'll be out of jail. But she won't be out of God's jail and neither will you. Yeah. It's not just a life sentence, it's eternal. The punishment, the penalty for sin, because you're sinning against an eternal God, so the punishment is eternal too. The damnation of hell awaits you, Newcastle sinner. Young and old, hear me. Hear the voice of the Savior. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, repent ye, Turn that is, about turn, face the other way, turn from, forsake the sin, the rebellion, the, the iniquity, the lawlessness. You turn from it, forsaking it, and you turn to the only Savior, to Jesus, the Son of God. And you embrace Him in faith, believing, trusting, confiding fully in Him and him alone, nothing of yourself and nothing of your doing. Trusting only in Jesus. Salvation in none other name, under heaven, given amongst men. Go to Jesus today in the way of repentance and faith towards him. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the only way you can enter into God's kingdom. In the way of repentance and faith. Watch him. You like a copy of God's word, read for yourself. See that these things are so. According to God's own record. Read, study, meditate upon the person of Jesus. The lovely Savior who so loved sinners that he came into this sin-sick world to live and die and rise again from the dead in order that eternal life, everlasting life might be yours in the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God. If you like a copy of God's Word, feel free to come and ask for one. May God bless you, Newcastle sinners. May God bless you and have mercy, mercy I say, upon your precious, precious, but damn worthy souls.